Hi guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I've got a super tip for you guys on two cycle, two stroke carburetors. And this will be a super good tip for you guys to know, especially if you work on chainsaws and weed whackers and other two cycle equipment that's out there. So this chainsaw here came in the shop. It's a Husqvarna 445. It still runs poorly after having a brand new carb kit put in there. And the reason for that is it does have a hidden fuel leak that most of the time you would not expect. Now to show you guys where this leak is, I'll need my pressure tester here. And by the way, if you want to get that tester and you want to get a good one, I recommend that you get the OEM Walbro. It's part number 57-11-1. You can get cheaper versions, but I do prefer using the better quality ones, especially if I'm doing work for customers. Now in a previous video that I made in the past, I showed you guys how to pressure test the carburetor. And this is how you can find out where the leak is on any carburetor. However, where the leak will be on this carburetor today may surprise you. Now what you want to do with your pressure testers connected to the fuel inlet, this is where the fuel comes in the carburetor from the fuel tank. So you want to follow the fuel line with the filter right up to the connector. And for me to be able to show you where the leak is today, I will not be connecting it on the other connectors. This is the impulse connector and this is the primer line connector. So now I'm going to soak it in the fuel. And again, be extremely careful if you do it this way. And I'm going to pump up the pressure tester. Typically, I would pump it up to about 5 PSI. It should hold there if the carburetor is good or if the needle valve is good. However, today you will see that it will not be able to keep any pressure. Now to see where the leak is, guys, take a good look at where the bubbles are coming from. And you can see that the pressure tester is not keeping any pressure at all. Now this leak is unusual because it's leaking right where the connector is in the carb. Right where it's pressed in. It's a bit harder to see if it's not submerged, but here it's out of the fuel. If I pump up the tester, you will see it's not keeping pressure. And I can actually hear air when I pump it. And I put a bit of hand soap here just to show it to you better. And it's quite a large leak actually. And here's another shot. So it gradually leaks out of there. This will mess up all the pressure in your carb. This chainsaw was actually bogging down when you tried to rev it up. And if you adjusted the carb one day, you went to use the saw the next day, it wouldn't run. It would only run that day a little bit. So I think you guys get the gist here that it's leaking at the elbow. These are leaks that I usually don't expect. Usually I expect the leaks to be between the covers of the diaphragms here and the carb itself or the needle valve inside the carb. And now in the video, I'm going to show you how to fix that leak. And all I'm going to be using today, guys, is some JB Weld. I read about JB Weld online and it says that you can use it to fix gas tanks. So I figured I can use it for that. First, however, though, I am going to clean it with a wire brush. Make sure it's absolutely clean before you put that JB Weld on there. And while I'm at it, I'm going to seal all the other connectors as well. There's three connectors all together here. And before I put the glue on, I will clean it with carb cleaner. You can use brake cleaner or methyl hydrate. So what you want to do now is let this dry properly. Now mix your JB Weld properly. By the way, I'm using these tubes from JB Weld. And this is the long setting JB Weld glue. I don't recommend you using the five minute setting glue. And this is the main culprit here. Just going to set the glue all around the connector. It's a bit awkward. Make sure you get right under there as well. And I'll do the connector for the primer. And I've got it on all three connectors. You can clean it up a bit as well when you're done here. If you dip your finger in water, it's easier to shape the glue around the connectors. 
and make sure guys that you don't glue the covers to the card body. So what I'm going to do guys is let this dry overnight. It is the long setting glue. Again, I do highly recommend that you use the long setting glue, not the five minute setting epoxy. The long setting glue is much stronger once it's dry. And in the following video clip, I'll be doing a pressure test on this carb. If it has no leaks, I'll stick it back on the chainsaw, start it up and show you guys that it runs good after the leak is fixed. Hey guys, it's the next day here. The carb looks nice and good. The glue's nice and dry. Let's do a pressure test on this carb and see if it will hold the pressure. And let's connect the pressure tester. Again, you want it on the fuel inlet of the carburetor. You don't want to do it on the primer connector or the impulse line connector because it may not hold the pressure there. The reason you do it over here typically is because this inlet is connected to the needle valve inside the carburetor. And usually I test the carburetor to see the integrity of the valve. However, at this time I located the leak on the connector and the carb as you saw previously. So now we're all connected. I'm going to push that tester. I'll bring it up to about five or six PSI. And so far so good. Actually, I went a little bit over here. It won't really matter. That needle is not moving. We're not losing any pressure whatsoever. So that's great. And you can also release the pressure from these little gauges down here. You just unscrew it. So now what I'll do is slap it in the chainsaw. Once it's in, I'll continue the video, start it up, and hopefully I don't have any more problems with this chainsaw. All right, she's back together. She does run good. I will take it outside, do a few test cuts so you guys can see how good it runs now that the leak is fixed. So there she is, guys. I'll give it a start. So it does look like I've got the problem solved. I'm happy because sometimes you can waste so much time with chainsaws that bog and don't want to keep running properly. And if I look at the fuel line down in here where it connects to the carb, there are no leaks whatsoever. Before I fixed it, it was leaking gas there all the time. Now in the past, you could have sealed that up with nail polish, believe it or not, and super glue. But nowadays, because there's different products in the gas, it's not guaranteed that these will stand up to that. And again, this is the JB Weld I used today, the one in the tubes. Now the JB Weld steel stick like this may work as well. It does claim that it is good to repair fuel tanks. I have a buddy that uses this one all the time for these types of repair here, and he's had good luck with it. Now, if you still continue to have problems after you put a carb kit and you fix a leak like this on these saws, you might want to look at other things like crank seals and the cylinder gasket. Sometimes they leak air there and it will cause the same issues. And also don't forget that your fuel line and filter are in good condition and not leaking as well. So thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to like the video and subscribe and to bookmark it because this video may come in handy for you one day. Again, make sure to check all the connectors on your carburetor, your fuel line and your carburetor kit. These are the most common problems I run across when I get chainsaws in the shop. And also super critical is to make sure you're using good gas in your chainsaw. Thanks again and we'll see you in my next video. Take care.